if you're a business analyst on an agile team, it likely means that your organization and the product you support is large enough and complex enough to benefit from having a business analyst. For example, one of the products in my space is a portal that supports customers, partners, and suppliers. And for each of those kind of customer or user categories, there's a bunch of different roles, right? Because we are a B2B organization. So for a customer, you might have people there who are from their finance um, organizations who who care about invoices and getting things paid. They're from their operations who care about warehouse and supply chain and then people from their services and support who care more about creating incidents and tickets for their organization. In addition to all of those, for each of those categories, we have internal stakeholders who are really responsible for kind of the end results of those customer um, interactions, whether it's getting invoices paid, um, getting orders shipped to the right place, um, getting services, field services sent to the right place um, to, to manage our support. And so there's a large group of stakeholders who all have things that they want in our customer portal. So for an agile business analyst in an environment like this, you might have requirements that might be big, giant, cross-company, cross-platform initiatives that is going to require you to coordinate really heavily with different teams and different product platforms and whatnot. And these are going to feel much more like your big, giant, more like waterfall-ish type initiatives. You may also have smaller roadmap initiatives. These are going to be the things that are really your team are probably coming up coming up with your team and your core stakeholders, and they could be things for a specific domain. So in my case, maybe it's a it's a thing um, for invoice payments or a specific stakeholder group. So maybe it's a new feature for just partners. And then you may also have work that comes through because another team has an initiative and there's some piece that they need you to do um, in order for their initiative to be 100% complete. Maybe it's showing something to a customer, whatever it may be. So you may be getting requirements from them. And then last but not least, requirements can sometimes come in the form of what I like to call hot requirements. And these are usually things that are unplanned, unexpected, but suddenly there, there's work for you to do, work for your project team to do. Um, and it's usually things like, you know, some some software, um, some platform had some unintended or sudden need. Maybe they're going out of support. Maybe there was an upgrade that changed how things work. And now some work has come into your space um, for you to essentially analyze and understand what needs to change um, for things to get done. An Agile BA's job in all of this, which is really kind of the same in Waterfall, is to create a clear understanding around the problem or need, the stakeholders, the, the intended value of the change, the change, the things that are going to change around it, the context of all the things in the environment that are causing this problem or need, and then eventually the solution, the thing that your team is actually going to deliver that hopefully delivers the value to these stakeholders that addresses the problem or need. These things together are known as or referred to as the BA um, core concepts in the international or in the body of business analysis. Body, Babak the business analysis body of knowledge. So now let's get to the actual day. In the, so now that we've covered all that background, let's actually get into the actual day in the life of a business, an agile business analyst. The first types of meetings that you're going to be kind of coming across often as, a, as a, any kind of really participant in an agile environment is those recurring meetings. They could be daily standups. They could be backlog refine, refinement meetings. They could be backlog prioritize, prioritization meetings. They're essentially the recurring meetings that you have with your core team. Um, and they're usually done on a regular cadence. It could be daily. It could be biweekly. It could be weekly. And the goal here is really to ensure that your whole team is crystal clear on really all those BA core concepts relative to the stories in the backlog or that are going to be in the backlog. The next kind of meeting you're going to be in a lot as an agile business analyst is collaboration meetings. These are going to be all over your calendar and they're probably going to take up the majority of your time or at least a big chunk of your time. Collaboration meetings might be for those big cross-company, cross-platform initiatives. They might be for those roadmap roadmap items, or they might be for those hot issues. These can be to talk through how a new process is going to work, or to talk through all the scenarios for a specific new feature, or it could be to talk about one of those hot new issues that has just come up to determine if your system is really even the the system that should be making a change to facilitate solving that problem. Once again, your goal in these meetings is to build a, build a clear understanding of those BA core concepts, which are, again, understanding the problem or need, understanding who the stakeholders are, 
understanding the value of either making the change or that needs to be delivered with the change, um, all the things that need to change in the whole kind of context of the space, the context itself, as well as the final solution that you intend to deliver. Before AI in these meetings, that meant asking questions, taking notes, and verifying those notes. So time had to be taken during these meetings to potentially document and verify that documentation. So you hear a lot of statements like, sorry, can you repeat that again to make sure I capture that correctly? With AI and transcriptions, rather than missing things because you're taking notes and asking again to clarify, you can simply pay attention and focus on asking those clarifying questions. Once the meeting is done, some platforms might summarize that conversation for you. Um, I prefer to get an extract of the, the transcription so I could generate my own more specific summary. For example, sometimes I provide additional context to the AI so it can create a better, more kind of informed summary. Sometimes I like to spe specifically ask for things like what are the likely or all the likely system changes based on the conversation and potentially whatever context that I might have added and doing it like that rather than letting it auto create a summary based on only what was talked about in the meetings might lead to more insightful um, output from the AI with additional things that you maybe may maybe did not consider. It's important to note with this and pretty much all other things I will be talking about in this video, especially as it relates to AI, is that AI is not perfect. So you still have to pay attention. You still have to know how to ask the right questions. You still have to validate AI's outputs because it's not always 100% accurate. But it does save you time and allows you to focus on more, the, on more of the human value added pieces. The next type of activity you'll be doing on a regular basis as a business analyst is modeling re requirements. And this is where you start to create a lot of that understanding across the team because it allows everybody to see problems in different angles, find gaps, and really to just think more critically. Uh, modeling can be text-based, like a functional decomposition, where you start with a high-level, doc, uh, not document, requirement, and really break down those requirements until those smaller pieces or features or use cases to really understand all the different pieces and really compare them side by side to understand, oh yeah, in order to accomplish this, we want to do X, Y, and Z. Um, another text-based um, model is a user story as a I want, so that you're modeling that information, who you are, what you want, so the change, um, and why it's valuable. Um, and then oftentimes with user stories, you have acceptance criteria, acceptance criteria, um, I like to use Gherkin format, which is, you know, essentially creating those scenarios. So you're really thinking about the interaction a user is going to have with whatever change that you're making to making sure you're thinking about all the rules and things like that that need to be true to really govern whatever new feature that is. Um, if you've ever written user stories in that manner or functional decompositions or acceptance criteria um, using Gherkin, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit tedious. Um, and so with AI, the benefit is all you have to do is provide the information. Your responsibility is ensuring that the AI has all the right information, and then you can set it to task into following some of those stricter structures that sometimes can feel super tedious. And um, even though they're always helpful, the tedium of it sometimes makes you not want to do it. Now you don't have to. You just provide the information. It, it, it does the, the, the boring part of formatting it and structuring it. And it is important to note that that format and structure does help other teams and helps other people think more critically. Um, and it won't be correct unless you provide it the right information. Visual models are still a little bit of a challenge for AI. I don't use um, AI to do a lot of visual modeling. I have experimented um, with using some visual modeling that allows AI to use essentially syntax or kind of code based uh, visualizing or a way to visualize um, models. One of those languages is Mermaid, where you can make actually a whole bunch of different types of models. So if you could really put your information together in a way that is crystal clear and understandable by the machine, you can have it output, Ger or sorry, not Gherkin, um, Mermaid syntax. And as long as you tell it the kind of model you're expecting, you can just paste that in into, into one of those code um, engines and it, it could create that model. Now, if you're like me, somebody who actually likes to model and I like going through that process to kind of do my own analysis and analysis and create my own understanding, then you may not find that as um, valuable to you. Likewise, I'm a visual person. I have a background in UI 
And so I, I like to be particular on my UI. So I still like to do that um, on my own. But if you are a person who just doesn't like doing that part of the job, there are some ways you could use AI to make it a little bit easier. But again, you still have to do the work of finding finding what needs to be um, understood so that the AI can actually create an accurate model. The last type of activity I'll talk about for a business analyst day in the life is just that pure analysis work. Uh, and from a time perspective, this is a place where you can easily get a lot of hours back by being able to utilize AI. Uh, for example, when I was, I'm new on a project, one of the things that I usually do to kind of get myself ramped up is to comb through a bunch of old documents, whether it's old requirements, old user stories, old confluent, confluence pages, old training, to start to create my models of how I think the process works so I could get some idea of what the as is um, processes might look like, the as is data flows, whatever it may be. It helps kind of fill, fill in the blanks. So when I go talk to people, I'm not starting with zero. I have some idea of what's going on and I just need them to fill in those blanks. Now with a strong AI large language model, you could just tell it to read these four or five Word documents and extract out specific information. Maybe you can ask it something, and I've done this before to say, hey, go through all these documents and uh, pull out every system, all the systems they're interfaced with, what type of data is moving across them, um, and whatever else you might need to understand about or about the information in those documents, and it'll pull it out. Sometimes it'll have some gaps. Those are the gaps. Now you can go talk to stakeholders and kind of get those clarified. But in order to have come to that same table on my own, it would have taken me hours to read through every document, read through every paragraph, find the system, try to find out what, what other systems is talking to, what data might contain. With a large language model and a generative AI tool, you can have it just read all of them and generate it for you, and then you can start from there without spending a bunch of time doing that. Another great scenario um, I had where I, I should note that I'm not a developer. Um, I took some entry level courses um, back when I was in school, like 15 years ago, um, or I guess over 15 years ago now, but I'm not a coder. I don't code in my day to day job. But some months back, um, I had the developers install VS Code and Copilot just so I could experiment it experiment with it because one of the big draws of AI is vibe coding, meaning you don't have to necessarily be a strong coder to be able to create a program. And so that's what I attempted to do in this scenario. Somebody gave me some data in a, in a structure that was very far away from the way I needed it to be structured to get the information that I needed. The way the data was connected to each other would have either required me to be an Excel wizard, or I would have had to done it or I would have to do it very manually in a way that would have taken me a super long time. So I could, so you know, pre AI, my choices were either to learn how to do it in Excel, which is always a risk because sometimes you don't figure it out and you still have to do it manually, or just start doing it manually. In this case, I decided to take that data, um, give it to um, a Copilot, and say, "Hey, this is the way the data exists. This is what I need from it. Can you help me specifically write a Python code?" or yeah, a Python script to help me extract this data. And then I ran it, and in just a few iterations, it probably took me no more than 10 minutes, it created a Python script that I could, I could run myself, and it would do the transformation that I needed, and it output the information. It was incredible, and I'm not a developer. So that is also possible. Obviously, you have to have access to um, GitHub Copilot, as well as uh, a, a development tool. But again, it's something that would have taken me hours to either learn how to do it or do it very manually. And it took me just a few minutes with AI. So analysis, again, is a space where you're going to benefit a lot from some of these AI tools because it can just comb through far more information, way more with much more speed than you could possibly be able to do. One thing I do want to note is that if you're watching this video because you're a business analyst trying to find more ways to essentially incorporate AI into your day-to-day -to, -day to be more efficient, my advice to you is first, focus and have a clear understanding on the full scope of what it is a BA is supposed to deliver. Think about all the different types of deliverables, all the different types of activities, whatever it may be. And then think about what AI is capable of delivering. I gave some examples in this video, processing data very quickly, um, reading, organizing, reorganizing, structuring information quickly. And then finally think about how do you adjust the pieces that you normally do to better align to that AI, right? How would you gather or document requirements if you know that the end result wasn't going to be you having to create all those models, all those um, 
structures, all those you know, p- deliverables, and you knew that you were going to give it to the AI. How would you go about doing your job? And that is how you need to think about your role to best evolve into this kind of new AI landscape, that the AI is there. It's not going away. How can I do my job more efficiently using AI to do the parts that it can do better than I can? So to bring it all back around and summarize the day in the life of an agile business analyst with AI, your job is still to bring clarity around those six BA core concepts, whether it's eliciting information from stakeholders, extracting information from files or data, or modeling information to facilitate some good old fashioned critical thinking. And today with some thoughtful prompting, AI can aid you in doing those more tedious parts of the job so you can spend more time understanding the needs of the people in your ecosystem. If you found that video useful, give me a thumbs up. If you have any other questions about the BA role, IT roles in general, let me know in the comments and I'll either answer you there or create a new video just like this one to answer your question. So subscribe to see your questions get answered and thanks for watching.